Hello fellow simmers and welcome to another Train Simulator 2020 video. This is Samuel Beeman of BLS Talking and today we're going to be looking at the work in progress. Well, actually it's not work in progress, it's actually released. <laughs> but the released Class 47 scenario pack for the Mid-Norfolk Railway Phase 1 by Attraction Studios. So basically this is version 1 of the scenario pack. And um, there is some exciting updates for this pack coming very soon. And uh, we'll delve into that uh, more on news feeds and posts on Facebook. So you can get more information about uh, version updates and version history on the Facebook and the website. So we're going to dive, dive into this straight away. So we're going to be doing uh, the scenario four of the Mid-North Railway Phase 1 because basically what this uh, scenario pack does is it's basically an expansion to the route so it adds uh, four new, currently four new scenarios to the Mid-Norfolk Railway Phase 1 scenario list. So this one's called A Round Trip to Thuxton so we take control of resident class 47 locomotive 47596 Albra Festival on a stopping passenger service to Wyndham Abbey and back to Thuxton again in the year 2009. So let's get into it and this time I'm going to do something a little bit different because basically I thought as I know the route pretty well now I'm thinking you know what Let's give it a drive without the HUD. So this time I'm literally just going to be in the cab. I'm going to be looking at my speedometer and drive it like as if it was real life as something a little bit different to bring to you to the video. Also, this is the final episode of our reviews and previews series one. So basically we'll then move on to series two which is fantastic. So we're going to have 20 episodes per series of reviews and previews and this is episode 20 and the final of that particular series. So what have I got for you guys for the Mid-Norfolk Railway recently? What is the updates on the route itself? Well basically uh, we've got somebody working on a sign um, I've probably told you about this in a previous video I did of Mid Norfolk, but uh, Steve Davis is part of our BLS team and now part of Team Traction, as we're all sort of part of Team Traction now as well, is working on a reskin of a sign for Deerham, which is basically a five mile an hour limit with a whistleboard underneath. Uh, it's just a black sign with five and then a whistle underneath so he's working on that and he's making it from scratch believe it or not because basically he was looking into reskinning the Thompson interactive asset of uh, the 10 mile an hour and the whistle board however due to how complicated the tiles are and how Thompson are a little bit iffy about uh, people reskinning and stuff of their content uh, Steve has decided to try and find an asset which is the, the, a sign of the same shape but is going to completely redo it so he's going to completely skin it from scratch. He's a top man really, he's good at that kind of stuff. And um, basically Brad has been working on the Yaxham area at present and he has laid down the track for the Yaxham Light Railway. And he's also started work around the Deerham area as well, uh, which should be interesting to see. And he's also done a lot of scenery updates to Wyndham itself. And uh, he, by the 21st of September, he does go back to university and that's going to slow up his work. But I said it's not to worry because us here at BLS, me, Will and Nat are going to take over and do a bit of fine detailing around some of the station areas. So we'll continue to make progress on the route while Brad does his studies. So the route will continue, it will go forward and don't you worry for the guys who have been asking about when is the Deerham section going to be complete, it will be complete in time and hopefully not in the too far distant future, that's what we want because we want to try and deliver it uh, in the not too far distant future. So that that's all the info I have about that at the moment. Uh, also, um, there is uh, obviously there's there, there, there's rumours I have, and it's possible that it's going to happen. And this is going to be as part of this scenario pack update to version two, that a forty seven three six seven Kenny Cockbird skin will be created, and uh, it should have the flush nose on one end. We're hoping that's going to happen. 
uh, it would be nice and uh, we've, we've, we've been chatting around and uh, we've got somewhere with that so we'll, we'll soon see what happens with that uh, but that would be such a great credit to those who do it and uh, to us here at BLS and Team Traction so let's hope this thing loads up soon because it is taking its time again so this scenario, actually I'm going to say this now, this scenario is based on a real uh, scenario, so this actually happened in reality. This is based on the events of the 27th of June 2019, I believe, where steam and diesel were running on the day. So it has 47.596 and I believe the 4MT tank 80078 running. And I made sure that the stock behind the loco is correct and prototypical to the actual same stock that the loco was running on the day along with the other locomotive as well running so this you can't say that this scenario isn't accurate because it is this and i went through the youtube videos of this particular day to get this correct so this is based on a real live life scenario and yeah It'll be interesting to see. And obviously, we're going to do the HUD. We're not going to have the HUD, sorry. Okay, so, let's turn it down a bit so we don't uh, do it. Good morning, driver. Today we should be doing a run on board of Resident Class 47 Locomotive 47596 down to Wyndham and back again for a nice round trip to Thuxton. Open up our doors by pressing T and let our passengers aboard and prepare for departure. So let's do it. Okay, so this is 47.596, all the festival look. And, uh, yeah, so this is a backdated train sim reskin. Uh, it comes in the Network South East revised 47 pack, and it's using the Virgin Trains Class 47 for the reskin. So this is a very, very nice reskin. They're done fantastically by um, backdated train sim. As you can see, we've got some AI coming in. It's the 4MT tank. We've got all our stuff done, yeah. Okay, so, oh, this is really difficult. This is really horrible to see that I'm not actually using the HUD. Um, this, this is going to be a challenge for me. I've never done this before, but let's give it a go. Bit of a brake test there. So these wipers look better inwards like that, don't they? I think that's, that's the, sort of the better position for them. And that there was our guard's whistle, I believe. So we have our right away. We do indeed. So obviously I've swapped out the horns for the AP horns on this, as they are the better horns than the original. I just departed with the loco brake on, would you believe it? Just 
15 mile an hour zone down here. Gently does it. So we've got the railways resident class 31 down there. There's, I mean, usually it has a um, silver roof, but I couldn't get that. So yeah, there it is. Sat there in its uh, in in the rotting sort of the, the rotting area where all the all the disposals are in the Faxton, in Faxton um, station siding area. It's interesting to drive this like this <laughs> without the HUD, but I know I, sh I know the route well enough now to, to be able to do that because I have run this route quite a few times now. I'm literally relying on the speedometer in front of me right now. So basically what I'm looking at is I'm looking at this here, the speedometer gauge. I am literally relying on that. So whether it's accurate or not in, in this train sim, we'll soon find out. <laughs> The AP horns certainly work much better on this uh, locomotive than they do uh, with the original horns on it. Because it's nice that you can just sort of move the horn stick up and down and it actually does it properly, you know.
Now here we are coming up to um, this is Dane Moore Bank. This this is where all the noise happens. So we're going to let it slow down a bit, and then we're going to full handle it up here. Let's do it. Handle back. I see four coaches behind us. It's not exactly going to get a major fresh in, but. I mean, that was quite good. Obviously, you know, better when we're outside, but I can't really go outside because otherwise I won't even know what speed I'll be going, so... Yeah. Right, it's a test of my driving skills on this route. So I like how um, basically in this cab you actually have the numbering of the actual loco on the cab at the top there. And you've obviously in cab number one end, I mean it's max speed, etc. We've also got some nice texturing around this cab of, uh, by Bossman Games. He did do a really good job of this Virgin Trains pack, class 47. Uh, sadly it's discontinued now, so basically if you haven't got it you're going to have trouble getting this scenario pack. Which is a shame. Uh, I don't know whether... It, Actually, yeah, for those of you, um, if any of you know about it, because there is a few people who have already asked me about um, how do we get the Virgin Trains pack. So, if any of you know how to get, like, I don't know, a Steam key or game key or something, so these guys can get the Virgin first generation pack, uh, let me know in the comments, because there's a few people who have been asking about it on how to get it, but obviously it's discontinued on Steam. It's discontinued in a few places now, it's even discontinued on Amazon as well. So if there's anywhere that you guys know where people can get it from still, and let us know in the comments. You see uh, beside us on the left, we have the Mark III stock stored in the side ins, and we also have the DRS 37, which is has pulled it in there. Although that's for some reason unbranded, I need to sort that out. I need my branding patch sorted out again, it seems. basically we've got a stop here at um, Kimberley here at the stop point stop marker so basically it's to give that sort of interpretation that the crossing keeper is opening the gates as we get there so we're gonna have to halt our train at the stop marker and then whistle before proceeding he's put his arm up over there look can you see over there he's put his arm up that could be oh uh, yeah so we are sounding horn before proceeding so that could be because as soon as I sounded my horn the guy put his arm up now that's quite cool isn't it that's like as if he's acknowledging it okay so sound your horn before proceeding over the crossing after this you shall have permission to continue your journey down to Wyndham Abbey okay so we have done that so we're going to proceed
give it a full handle, shall we? I love the rattles in the cab of this. I, I must say, the cab sounds, the in cab sounds of this are really good. And obviously, it would be nice if the AP sounds worked with this VT37 uh, because obviously the AP sounds are obviously going to be the superior ones compared to the DTG ones. So, this is basically the sound set you hear on this 47. Is basically recycled from the Network Southeast Class 47 pack, which we had years back in 2009, 2010. Railworks two days, basically. And then basically, this sound set got recycled and reused for the West Coast Mainline Over Shap Class 47s, and then obviously it was added to the uh, Boss Man Games one, and then basically Boss Man Games made the horn playable when actually it was originally a one tone horn and it just it, it, it kind of works but it kind of doesn't because it was designed as a one tone you don't get the high tones sounding completely correct this is why I've changed the horns over to use the AP ones I believe I've seen in Rail Sim users group I think it was Rousing Users Group or Official Train Simulators, one of the Facebook groups. Uh, somebody is currently working on making the AP sounds compatible with the Virgin Trains Class 47. Now that should be interesting to see and use because as far as physics go, this locomotive is perfect. It drives beautifully. The functionality of this Virgin Trains 47 is unbelievable. You have all of these switches that work. You even get like the immersion of the cab heaters and stuff like that. And also when you use the wipers in the rain and stuff, when you apply power the, the wipers get quicker. Whether this happens in real life I don't know, but it's basically to give that feel that it's using more power. So there is a lot to this. 47 functionality wise and functionality wise it is obviously superior to the default QGU and DTG one So I've got to make sure I've got to keep checking my Facebook while we're doing this. Okay, so basically I've just got a message from Brad, actually, the, the owner of the route. And uh, he's basically, he's uploaded the version 1.10 of the Mid North Railway Phase 1 route to ATS. We're still yet to update that on the BLS website, which we will do. And um, basically, version 1.10 is basically a fix that uh, stops the issues with quick drive because a lot of you reported issues with the quick drive scenario for the Mid North Railway Phase 1 route that it was buggy and the quick drives didn't work. Well, that's now been sorted out. 
and it's being re-uploaded as we speak to Alan Thompson's sim and I'm going to do exactly the same for the BLS page or website after I've done this video. So head over to Alan Thompson sim or BLS to get your latest version of the Mid Norfolk Railway Phase 1 route with the fixed quick drives. So there we go. So, yeah, that's the latest deal on the old Mid Norfolk. So at the moment we're not doing too bad in the sense of driving this with no HUD, I'm surprised. Mind you I have driven a couple of real locomotives in reality. I've driven a Class 03 Shunter on the Epping Onga Railway for a drive for a fiver. I drove a Class 20 on, again on the Epping Onga Railway for a drive for a 20, a 2020, <laughs> basically I suppose you could say a 20 for 20. And for my 21st birthday present, this was fantastic, this was, I got to drive my favourite locomotive type on the Seven Valley Railway, Class 33, 33108. And what a fantastic day that was. If you want to find out the video, if you want to find the video of me driving this, head over to Train Hunters channel, which is basically, it has a series uh, called Rail Riders featured on there. I've got milk bottles over there for some reason, I don't know why that is. And basically it has a train series, a documentary slash adventure series called Rail Riders and uh, I'm featured in there as well as Will and a few others. And it's a good series, I highly recommend it. This thing drives absolutely beautifully. You can't knock it, you really can't. So here we are at Wyndham. Just letting our passengers aboard. Well, off the train. This is where usually they come off the train, then we uh, shoot down to the run round loop, run round, and then come back and then let our passengers aboard again, or new passengers as it were. Instruction complete, head into Wyndham run round loop, then uncouple from your stock and run round the train. But remember to make sure our points are set for the road ahead. And also make sure your full train is in the run round. When uncoupled, don't forget to halt at the stop point at the opposite loop to get permission to connect to our stop. Stock, yeah. Okay, so we press nine on our keyboard to open up the map view and make sure our road is set. Our road is now indeed set so we can proceed into Wyndham run round loop. At least our brake, well the loco brake even. Horn and off we go.
Okay, so now we can disconnect her from our stock, I believe. Yep, we can drop off our stock. And now we are ready for run rounding. Power light switch. Where is our tail light switch? Does anyone know where the tail lights are? Yeah, let's have a look. Oh, there they are. Of course they are. Okay, so we've got our tail lights on now, so we can switch ends. Points are changed, and off we go. We've got to stop at the stop board before proceeding, haven't we? That's so basically the, the second man would get out of the train and switch the manual points on the run round so we can get uh, permission to go into the uh, to the back of the stock. In this case we're connecting up to the DVT. Permission granted driver, just make sure your points are set ahead of you, which I already have actually because I just pressed G, in order for you to back onto the stock. Okay, so release our loco brake again and off we head off. Engines again. Our lights on. Master key out. Turn our lights off. 
AWS on. Master key in. Forward gear. Marker lights on. Points change. Stock up. Great stuff. Now head into Wyndham Abbey where we shall collect our passengers for our return journey back to Thuxton. So we should turn our instrument lights off, marker lights off. Dump the brake. off, marker lights on, headlight on, AWS, master key in, forward gear, instrument lights on, release our brake, and we should have a vacuum, or in this case actually it would be air brake, because it's air brake stuck. Windham Abbey over there, you can see it in the distance, pretty cool. The resident DVT back there, 82125. Good angles you can get at this. You get loads of really nice trip shots on this. A bit windy today, and I hope you can hear the wind sound. We're getting there. Uh, I love that how that's very good how the weather changes like that. So it was quite sunny then, as you saw, and now it's sort of gone cloudy and clouded over. So the sun's gone in. It's really cool. I like that.
Okay, so it's right away for Thaxton. Let's sit from the outside, shall we? Whoa, okay, we're in a load of something. Trees. Going the right speed. Huh. Hmm. I'll see you later, Dad. It's me, Dad, going out. I don't get why that S-Bend is there actually. Does anyone actually know about that? Because obviously, there is just like a random S-Bend on there. And obviously you've got the temporary speed restriction there. Does anyone know why that S-Bend is there on the Mid-Norfolk? Let us know in the comments. Got quite a gradient here. So we're gonna put up full front.
I mean, you've got to love that sound of the 47, though, the, the, the idle sound, of that sort of knocking sound of them, you know, that uh, soul's a beat, as it were. The fast-paced, you know... It's just... It's something about it, isn't it? Here we are coming back up to Kimberley Park now, so this is where we're going to stop at our stop board once again to let the gated crossing open, even though it is actually already open in train simulator, but it's to give that immersion anyway. Permission granted to proceed to Thaxton. Don't forget to sound that horn, which we already did. Make sure the road is set into the down platform at Thaxton, which to be honest we don't actually have to do, because uh, it actually is automatic at Thaxton, so the, the, the points change automatically. So, off we go. I love these open fields, don't you? So we are coming up to Dane Moor again. This side isn't as much of a bank as the other side, but it's still a bank. So. Sort of goes in sort of a it's sort of like a ski jump, like a, a sort of it goes up and then over sort of thing.
This is where it's starting to go downhill now, so this is where I'm going to have to start braking. I see my speed going up on the speedo there. Let's go up slowly. Make sure we keep our speed in the correct area. And it's funny speed restrictions through Hardingham because you have to sort of stick to that 10 mile an hour limit as there's like a weak bridge uh, just past the station here. And obviously you have the temporary 10 mile an hour speed restrictions around the station. We got the road, it's all good. that 10 mile an hour speed restriction momentarily. Got to make sure of that though mind. You can't really do that by just looking at the speed though, you see. Because the game works differently, you see. Usually we would be going like heading up to 25 now, but the game has to be so specific you have to pass a certain point to uh, speed up. Should be now.
So we're heading into the down platform this time. Now this is due to the fact obviously there's two trains running theoretically on this uh, route today. Uh, obviously we don't go as we don't go up to Deerham because obviously it's only phase one, so we only go to Faxton. Uh, so the 4MT won't be there when we get there. Because what I've done is um, I put a temporary scenario marker on down for this scenario because you can put temporary scenario markers in scenarios so I put one at the end of the route where the end of the route is at the moment so the 4MT is currently up there and it won't come back down because I want it look a bit weird when it propelling repelling stock back in request signal approved Yeah, now we have it. That is the round trip to Thuxton scenario with 47596 and a DVT set as part of the Mid Norfolk Railway Phase 1 scenario pack by BLS version 1. So I hope you enjoy, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this preview of the uh, scenario pack version 1 of the class 47s. Mid North Railway Phase One. Oh, we've got triplets over there. Look at that. So, a fantastic work driver. You've completed this scenario. Another driver shall relieve you and take the train down to Deerham. Fantastic. So, complete the scenario. Great. So, anyway, as I was saying, thank you guys for watching this uh, preview of the scenario pack. I do hope you enjoyed watching this. Oh, as you can see, I've speeded 13 times, which isn't too bad considering I didn't use the HUD uh, signal passed at danger once I don't know what signal that is but that seems to happen there seems to be one signal out there you pass at danger it's purely because there is actually a signal fault with the route on phase one and that's something that will be rectified on later versions of the route but yeah as I say thanks for watching guys and um, yeah I'll speak to you guys soon don't forget to comment like and subscribe oh, and also check out our Facebook and website I'll link it in the description of the video the website is where you can you can download this marvelous route along with the scenario pack as well as other content from us here at BLS anyway thanks for watching guys I hope you enjoyed the video and goodbye for now Ta -da.